Hello Church, I'd like to welcome you all to the Calvary Center Sunday service. Uh, as we are about to move on to worship, I just want you all to use this as an opportunity to fill your hearts with joy. It's not just uh, joy you gain through materialistic or the people around you, it's the eternal joy, it's the joy of the Holy Spirit. So let's just bow our heads and commit this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who has joined online. Father, I thank you for their lives, Heavenly Father. I thank you for giving them the desire to join us online, Heavenly Father, and to know you, Heavenly Father. I pray that you would use this session as a blessing to them, Heavenly Father, and use this as an opportunity to fill their hearts with joy, Heavenly Father. No matter what their week have been, I pray that today their hearts will be filled with joy, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus. Proclaim it this morning. I hope it's built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, than Jesus blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest praise, but holy trust.
Lord Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. was a great worship session. So before we move on to the service, I'd like if you all take a pen and a notebook and uh, jot down whatever you guys get in your heart because the Lord is about to speak to you through the word and hope you guys enjoy it. How many of you believe God just did something amazing in our midst? I want all of you to just lift your hands. Take a, about 30 seconds. Okay, let's do a bit more. Let's do 45 seconds. Take about 45 seconds. And just begin to thank God. Don't ever run out of gratitude. Don't ever run out of a heart of thanksgiving. As the worship team is playing, as the musicians are just playing in the background. Come on church. For the next 45 seconds, begin to give praise to the Lord. For He has done great things. He has done great things. Lord, we thank you for the hearts that you have touched. We thank you for the bodies that you have healed, for the minds that you have released from worry, Lord, for the people that you instructed today with your word. We thank you for the presence of God. We thank you for being so present in our midst today, Father. We thank you that you are doing great things. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor. Father, today, even as we go through your word, I pray that you will speak to your people. We want to hear you. We want to learn from you. We want your word to transform us and captivate our hearts. We commit this time into your hands. 
in Jesus name we pray everyone said everyone said amen i hope you are not feeling that the service is over now just because we had a altar call we are going to hear the word of god and maybe even after that if you feel that you miss the chance to come forward and be prayed for or whatever you can you know spend time wherever you are as the music will play as the choir will sing you can use that time to encounter god today uh, i want to talk to you about a topic called wandering uh, wandering that means not not the thinking wandering uh, that is not about the i wonder what this one is doing i wonder what that is like not that wonder but the wandering of just going on a journey not knowing where it will end not knowing how you're going to find your way and uh, maybe sometimes not even knowing how to find your way back right uh, in our spiritual life it is fair to say that sometimes we do a bit of wandering in terms of pursuing truths feelings realities that may exist or may not exist to just make sense of life and our situations uh we think that the the searching of it in the outer paths will help uh but sometimes it just leaves us more lost than we were before i want to talk to you about wandering and the the longing you feel for home when you wander away how many of you you can raise your hands for this it's a safe question you're not going to get embarrassed how many of you went on a trip or went on a trip that you thought you well deserved and you really wanted to go and you finally went and now it's been 3 4 days or a week or two and you're missing home how many of you have had that feeling right i think some of us so most of us can relate to that feeling we want to go somewhere and we we set out and we plan and we invest and we make an effort we put leave or whatever we have to do and we go uh, thinking okay staying away from home for a while will help yes few days it does but after that it gets to a point where you're like oh man i miss home i just wish i can go and sleep in my own bed i wish i can just you know step into my hall or my living room or whatever where i am just who i am and i don't have to pretend and i don't have to ask for permission to do things it's my home i remember a time when i was <coughs> quite young younger i'm very young now uh, younger uh, i used to love to go to my aunt's place in candy uh, she has a orphanage there with many kids uh, they were my age so during my school holidays i used to love to go there and spend some time uh, so we don't just get to play uh, although they are they are on holidays they have duties they have to arrange the gardens arrange their beds and all of that so when we wake up in the morning i have my breakfast and i have to go out and if i am to hang out with them i have to do the duties with them so we go into the garden we catch snakes we chase the cows we do fun things and i thought one holiday i remember i thought man i should i want to go for the whole month right i want to go and spend my, the whole month of vacation there the second week i'm calling my mom and saying mama just send any and jessy to come and pick me up i can't stay here anymore the third week my auntie called my mom and said she calls akki she said akki you better come and pick him up he's just fed up of staying here and then my sisters had to somehow come and pick me up and take me home because the truth is there is no place like home am i right uh no matter how luxurious the other place is how comfortable it may be how appealing it may seem for a certain time the truth is there is no place like home but biblically we see or we we can look at some stories where god's people have wandered away from home gone away from home and always long to come back we see a theme right throughout the bible about a people who were 
who was so close to God, was so present with God, in reality they were walking with God, but because of something that they did, that, that closeness was lost and they were put out of the garden. But God's plan throughout the Bible is not just to bring two or three people back home, but his plan is to call all mankind and gather all mankind back to him into a place where he will dwell among them and we will dwell with God. That's God's desire. So the whole Bible basically is a story of people longing to come home. If you look at it, generation after generation, yes, their stories are unique, the seasons are unique, the path they played in, the, in this biblical narrative is unique. But if you, if you really look at it, the whole biblical story is about God's people coming home to him. And this coming home is not just about coming for a season, but this coming home is about coming home for eternity. This is about coming back and spending eternity with our Heavenly Father. But we are going to take a look at some stories in the Bible. <clears throat> like I told you, in Genesis 3, we see God drives out Adam and Eve from the very garden they were created in. God drives them out and he puts a hindrance between them and the tree of life and them and the garden of Eden. No more can they enter this place of abundance and fullness. This was not just a place of earthly abundance and fullness, but this was also a place of spiritual presence of God, abundance and fullness. Because God was walking with them. It's a place like no other. None of us will be able to imagine what that environment was like. But still, somehow, they happen to be put out of that place as well. We see in Genesis 4, the story of Cain and Abel. We know that Abel's offering was more accepted before God, while Cain's offering was not. God didn't like the offering that Cain brought. So therefore Cain filled with rage and anger, what did he do? He killed his brother. And God knew this, God saw this. And, God, and Cain was driven from the place where Abel's blood was spilled. And God said to Cain that he will be a restless wanderer. He was put out of the place where they called home. And God said that he will be for his lifetime a restless wanderer. He belonged to a place but he was put out of that place because of what he did. Genesis 12 we see God calling Abraham to go from what he called home. His family, his countrymen. We see God calling him to go from his home and set up a place. That God will show him a place where God's people can later call home. But look, Abraham was called to leave his home. Exodus. These, these very people of God caught up in Egypt as slaves. And they cry out to God. God hears their cry. And God uses Moses to bring them out of slavery. And now they are on a journey. They are wandering through the wilderness. They are on a journey looking to inherit the land that they can call their home. But not only did they inherit the land and call it their home, but somehow even while they inherited it, they managed to be exiled from that very land it itself. Up, uh, I mean, so much so that they, they used to long for home from the places where they were taken captive. So this, this theme of people longing for home, looking for a place to settle, looking for a place to belong forever is seen. In a way, human beings are not very good at staying in one place. We, we get fed up of it fast. Even Jobs, 
even homes even vehicles sometimes you you get the vehicle of your dreams and after about 2 3 years you just want to sell it off and buy something else we we are not used to staying in one place or oh, positioning ourselves in one place for a long time we somehow manage to get discontent in where we are and we want something more if you look at it this way even jesus left his place of glory and stepped down into this earth as a man to offer himself on the cross for our sins he died and he rose again on the third day he defeated sin and death and he was once again taken back to his father he once again went back to the place where he left and came and he returned home and all of us believe that that is where we are going as well all of us believe that that is the home that we are going to inherit in eternity but the life here is not easy waiting for that call home or <coughs> longing for our a rival home is not easy some of us know that the there are only a few ways that that could happen either we we die and we are called home or else the coming of the lord happens and then we we are taken to be with him it's only one of few ways but we know that as christians our home is not this earth all that we are doing here is transition it's temporary but our home our eternal home is in heaven with god but we understand or oh, because of what we what we face on earth because of how we go through life on earth we sometimes find it hard to gain perspective of what an eternal home is like i have had young people come and ask me these questions which some i, I mean i i didn't know how to answer they ask me these questions like johnny if you are going to just be with god and we are just going to be singing holy 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 is the lord isn't that going to be boring and that got to me and i was thinking how am i going to answer him i mean i had a theological a biblical answer to give him but he was not going to be convinced with that so i just said bro let's wait and see what's going to happen but we find it hard to gain a perspective of what an eternal home is like because of how we live our life here on this earth but i want to tell you something today that all of us can be found in a state of wandering at some point in our lives we can we relate very well to the story of the prodigal son why because we have had times in our lives that we found ourselves going away from home we have found ourselves running away from home and realizing the need to come back home that's why most of the church relates to the story of the prodigal son quite well so today we are just going to look at the story of the prodigal son and i just want to bring to you a an understanding for what christ did for us on that cross i want to bring to you a an understanding of the hope that we have and the hope that we need to share with those around us in luke 15 we see three stories one is the parable of the lost sheep the second is the parable of the lost coin and thirdly the parable of the lost son same theme something is lost but was found the first two stories have people going in search of what was lost and they find it and they take possession of it but in the third story the prodigal son has to find his way back home but before we get to that let's first think why would someone who has everything in his home wealth protection love 
someone who has things that others would only dream about why would someone like that demand before time that what is his be given to him so that he can go and do what he wants with it why would someone want to leave home leave a place of security and go into the unknown and later we know in that story only to lose all that he had why would someone be so curious why would someone be so i mean careless why would someone leave home and go only to lose everything we may blame the prodigal son we may look down on his actions but it is safe to say that all of us even though we know we have everything in god we sometimes look outward yes we know that god has the best plans for us that god can give us what we need god can bless us beyond measure yes we know that there is more love in him than all man combined we know all of that but why do we still wander in search of these things in outward places there's some sort of curiosity in us there's some sort of recklessness in us that makes us want to look outward or outside then be patient and wait for the lord to do what he has to do if you look in genesis chapter 3 recently pastor loan he was doing a class with us and he brought this perspective into us he, he he taught this thing and i'm just going to touch on that in genesis chapter 3 the devil came and just created a question in eve's mind is what god uh, what has is what god has given you enough or can there be more that's just the question that the devil created in eve's mind you can be more like god he said he created a sense of possibility that never existed he created a sense of reality that was never been able to achieve they were never able to achieve that but he created that in their minds just so that she would begin to do or she would uh dare to do what god has told her not to do i think that is the same reason that makes us wander off in search of more i think that is the same reason that makes a, a child of god who knows they are complete and they are full they, they that whatever they need god has the makes a child of god still go and look out i believe sometimes it's that question of can there be more outside of god than there is in god <laughs> this search takes us to places we were never willing to go i know of young people even recently i was having a chat with a, a young person that they get to a point where religion christianity and the bible alone is not enough so you go in search of explanations that will help you make sense of things so you look into science you look into different types of philosophies you look into different types of beliefs different uh, practices that people have come up with over time and you look into these things trying to make sense of life trying to make sense of your purpose trying to make sense of where you have been and where you are going but it leaves you with more questions more confusions than you had even when you started that journey this this feeling of can there be more outside god takes us to places that we shouldn't be the prodigal son he comes to his father and he says divide the share i want what's mine and he takes what's his and he goes to a distant land he's searching he's exploring 
He is looking for ways to make life count. He is looking for ways for life to have more sense, more meaning, more joy. He is looking for all that in the wrong places. What happens? We know for a while he did enjoy. We can't deny that fact. For a while he, he lived like no one else lived. He, he spent all that he had and he lived a very, very good moment. But there came a day when all his wealth ran out. All the friends that encouraged him, that were around him, that used him, they all just vanished. There came a day when the very thing that made him go out and start looking turned into a deep, dark void in his heart. He did not know how to fill. Suddenly, everything that he had was gone. Suddenly, even the things that may have given him temporary joy were no more available for him to keep himself going. And he hits rock bottom. <laughs> he hits a deep place like never before. If you notice the two other stories, someone came looking for the sheep. That person turned the up house upside down to look for the coin. But no one came looking for the son. Ideally, if the theme continued throughout the three stories, someone should have come looking for the son. But no one came. Because unlike the two other characters or the two other items in the other two stories, the son has the ability to make a choice to come back home. Do you, realize, do you get what I'm saying this morning? The son was created with the ability to choose to come back home. And no one was going to manipulate this choice. It was on him to choose to come back home. It is good for us to know if we are in a state of wandering today, if we are in a state of go, being gone away from home, if we are a state from being distant from God, you need to know one very important thing today. It only takes you to come back home as well. It only takes for you to make a choice to come back home. You don't need anyone else. You don't need anyone's approval. You don't need anyone's validation of whether you are worthy or not. You don't need anyone's, you know, uh, anyone's license for you to come back home. All you need to do is if you make a choice, you are welcome home. There is no country too far. There is no distant too far from God that can keep you from coming home. The only thing that can keep you from coming is if you choose to stay away. Going away from home for the prodigal son was something he did deliberately. He chose to go away from home. Maybe he felt where he was and what he was doing and who he was in that house was not enough. <coughs> Maybe he wanted his life to make more of an impact. Maybe he wanted more for himself. Therefore he went. But even when he went like that and lost everything, the only thing remaining with him was his ability to choose to come home. I want you to understand the power of that. Even when you lose it all, you haven't lost everything because you still have the power to come home. The state of discontentment you are not happy with where you are. 
You are questioning your purpose. You think God has not done justice by your life. You think because you are saved, he, has, he, he owes more to you. And these things take you away from home. Take you away from his purpose. Take you away from his presence. Takes you into places where you start looking for things that don't make sense. But even in all of that, his grace is so sufficient that if you would choose to come home, Today, he will accept you. I want to ask you something. Uh, the story of the prodigal son is not just an example. I want you to listen to me carefully. The story of the prodigal son is not just an example of a boy who ran away from home and realized the need to come back and he came. The story is not just showing us that. That's not the only thing. But like I told you earlier, there was no one going after him because it was up to him to make a choice to come back, you need to understand something from that, that, that story or that narrative. The lack of someone who cared enough to go after the prodigal son is Jesus' intentional way of showing the need for him. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. Let me put it this way. In the story of the prodigal son, Jesus doesn't mention someone going after him to bring him back. I think that's very intentional. I think he's doing that on purpose. Because if you look at the biblical story, to bring back a lost world to God, to bring back the children of God back to the father, God actually sent our elder brother. I hope that makes sense. God didn't just expect his children to come back home like the prodigal son did. But if you look at the Bible, Jesus is known as our elder brother. And he left home he left glory. He left all that he had. His wealth, his power and his status. He left it all back there with the father. And he came into this broken world in pursuit of you and me. So in the story of the prodigal son, we do not see an elder brother who cared enough to come after him. He was so arrogant and angry even when he came back and the father threw him apart. He was so angry that he did that. But in the lack of a character like that in the prodigal son story, the biblical story is completed this way. There was a children of God who were lost and wandering away. They were destined to a lost eternity. No matter how many times God called them, they came and went, they came and went. They were finding it hard to be faithful to God. But in the, in the midst of that story, in the moment where a need for someone to come and bring them back home, in the moment of that need, God sends his son. The elder brother of the believers. He sends Jesus and he says, go and show them the way to come back home. And when Jesus talks to his disciples, he says, I am going to a certain place. And they're asking, Lord, how are we to get there? What does Jesus say? He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I want you to look at a certain sayings. When, when I say sayings, I mean these are verses in the Bible. I am just using it in this context. Sayings of an elder brother. Okay? I want you to listen to this. These are sayings of our elder brother. The first one, John 14, 2 to 3. 
It says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Do you see this? Our elder brother is coming and telling us, I am going to the father's house because I know my father has prepared a mansion with many rooms for all of you. And I am going there to prepare a place for you and I am coming back to take you there. If the elder brother of the prodigal son had done this, just imagine how different the story would be. But the elder son in the prodigal son story, what does he do? Father, I was with you all my life. I have served you in many ways. I have done this for you, that for you. And all I have, I have done for you, doesn't it count for anything? What does the father tell him? Son, all that I have is yours. There is a lack of a true elder brother figure in the story of the prodigal son. But in the story of the Bible, pursuing a lost children, a lost people that belong to God, the son of God, Jesus Christ himself is saying, my father's house has many rooms. And he's not just boasting about a place where he is going, but he's boasting about it in a way where he's saying, I am going there to prepare a place for you to come. So he's saying, you may wander on this earth. You may do what you're doing on this earth. But he's inviting his younger brothers and sisters. He's inviting the children of God and he's saying, I have prepared a place for you. And that's where I want you to be. Look at the second verse. Philippians 3, 20 to 21. <laughs> but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Look at the start of verse 20. What does it say? But our citizenship is in heaven. Our elder brother did not just come down to this earth to show you how you are to live here. But he is showing the church this picture. I am preparing a place for you to come home. And I want you to understand that this is the goal. It's not just you becoming a Christian on earth. But the goal is that we are able to inherit one of those many rooms that our Father has prepared for us. God knows that we cannot do it on our own. He knows that we cannot find our way home on our own. From Genesis to Revelation, it is a story of a people that are longing to come home. Yes, I know that while I'm talking about this, you might be thinking, oh, this is something that's going to happen in the future. Maybe, yes. But the choice you make today is going to affect what is going to happen in the future. Some of us know we are wandering away from God, but really don't have it in us to choose to come home. Sometimes we are happy with the wandering away. We are happy with being there. Sometimes we are not happy, but we just don't have the strength to come back. Sometimes we just do not know how to come back. But see, God didn't expect you to take that journey home. There is no physical journey that you have to take. But all what God wanted, wants us to do today is to accept 
the way home that is jesus he is not just about showing you a way to go home but he is the way to go home don't look at him for instructions on how to get there because he is the way to get there jesus is the way he is the truth and he is the life the true elder brother that see you need to understand this in the story of the prodigal son the father divided the wealth among both sons so if one lost it that means the other had it and for him to share it with the younger brother was his choice the father did not have any of his own in that sense <coughs> to share with the younger son again so it had to be the elder brother that would if he thought okay i forgive him it's okay what he did i will give him a portion of my wealth it had to be the elder brother's choice but he didn't do it he was too arrogant he was too righteous in himself he could, he didn't do it he was even angry at the fact that the son came home and the father is celebrating that but look at this jesus had all the wealth all the glory all the authority he had everything seated on the throne he had everything but he thought for his younger brothers and sisters for the other children of god it is worth that i leave all these things behind it is worth stripping myself of all these titles and authorities and everything and to take a break from this so that i can go into the brokenness of the world i can go into the mess of the world i can go in into the place where the sin of the world dwells and i can show them the way back home just look at the importance or the beauty of what he did we know that there are i mean our earthly siblings who might not share their wealth with us to bring us home there are some and there may not be some there are we know of siblings and families that wealth is more important than the mem- family member in themselves but jesus thought it was worth to leave it all behind to come in pursuit of us so just imagine the prodigal son story going like this the lost son was in the pig sty eating the pig's food and he hears a knock on the gate and he recognizes a voice that says mr so and so let's let's put some names to it mr sudat is uh, is someone called mark working with you and the younger son is in the pig sty and he recognizes the elder brother's voice and the joy that comes into his heart to think man my brother is here someone from home has come to get me just imagine how the prodigal son story would have taken a turn there he would have gone and hugged the elder brother and said thank you for coming and the elder brother would have been like wait wait first have a wash and come you stink i still love you but you stink i mean picture that how things would have changed but no one came to knock on the door <coughs> no one came looking for him but in our story even in the mess even when we were found in the mess the bible says god demonstrated his love for us as this even while we were sinners even when we were yet sinners christ died for us 
So it's like the elder brother knocking on the pigsty, the gate, and him coming and jumping into the pigsty with the younger brother, hugging him and taking him out of there. Just imagine. But that is what Jesus fulfilled for you and me. That is not the story of the prodigal son. That was just a parable. But that is the story of the Bible. That's the truth. It's reality. It's what actually happened. And today, <coughs> you, you may be here in a state where you are wandering for deeper realities, deeper truths, deeper sense of purpose. You want things to click more in your life. You want more of a substance in your life. You are not happy with where you are and you have been wandering and wandering and wandering. I like that song, I Thank God. It starts by says, wandering in through the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I'm tempted to go ahead with the song, but I'm not going to do that. Joel is laughing as if, don't do something weird now. So I'm not going to go ahead with the song. But that's the reality, wandering, looking for a place to rest. And Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And you will find rest for your soul. As the worship team would come, maybe very quietly, very softly, we are going to let that song, Living Hope, just <coughs> captivate our hearts today. And I'm not going to call you to the front or anything like that. But as a church, I would like you to stand up. Not now, not right now. But as a church, I would like you to stand up. And no one can hold you from lifting your hands and making that choice to come back home today. Remember, you don't need anyone else. Even if you have lost it all, even if you are looking so hard, even if you are in a very desperate situation, you are in a very, I mean, you, have, you, you are in a lost situation. Remember, no matter what you have lost, you still haven't lost the ability to choose to come home. I want you to remember that. If that may be the only thing you have left, that only thing is enough to change your life, to secure a place for you in the Father's house. Because our elder brother has prepared the rooms and he's coming back. He's coming back to take you to a place. In the book of Revelation, it says a place where there is no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears. A place where there is no pain to be felt. A place of perfect peace and love and joy. A place of perfect fullness. A place of walking with God, walking with the one who holds everything in the palm of his hands, walking with the one who gave you the life itself. He's coming to take you to a place like that. No more sorrow, no more pain. I just want you to meditate on that fact today. Just meditate on that invitation. Meditate on the journey the elder brother took to come into this broken world, into yours and my sinful state, into the mess that we found ourselves in. He came into that mess. He came into that brokenness. He came into that pain and he took it upon himself 
and he said that i pay the price that you are supposed to pay and i am preparing the way that you should go in my father's house is many rooms i am telling you this because i am preparing a place for you to go Jesus I heard a loud shout from the throne saying look God's home is now among his people he will live with them and they will be his people God himself will be with them he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain All these things are gone forever. The moment we step foot home. And that is our home coming. That is the day we would have all gone home. Revelation 21, 3 to 4. I'm going to read that one more time. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look! God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Church, listen to this. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. That is when we set foot home. and your elder brother came he prepared the way he took upon himself the price that you were supposed to pay the reason that you could not enter he took it upon himself and he made a way and he said i am the way i am the truth and i am the life those who believe in me will never perish but they will have everlasting life today if you are wandering away from home as the worship team leads us in this song and they are just singing about a living hope i want you to surrender yourself to god maybe you know enough to make the choice to come home you know enough but if you do not know how to do it and you need help you can come to the front only if you do not know how but you feel in your heart there's something happening there's an invitation i cannot refuse there is a transformation that i really need there is a belonging that i need and i want to come back home but i do not know how if you are feeling that you can come and the pastors and we are just going to pray with you and guide you through this process but for those who are here you know the lord you have been with the lord but you have wandered away and today this message is reminding you the word of god is reminding you that it's time to come home it's time to consider the invitation of your elder brother and it's time to join hands it's time to come home this is the time where the church will stand lift their hands and the rest of what you do is between you and god don't let anyone take this moment away from you declare one more time then through the darkness then through the darkness your loving kindness goes through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus
I hope all of you enjoyed today's sermon and uh, the service overall. I'd like to invite you all to the next service as well. Don't forget to join in and we'll be updating on our page on a weekly basis. So please uh, stay updated and make sure you have your notifications on. Thank you.